Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and in today's video we're going to be unboxing the brand new 13-inch MacBook Pro. This is the non-touch bar version because of course the one with the touch bar included doesn't start shipping until two to three weeks. So we have this one today, we have an early look at it, and if you want to be notified when I release my unboxing video on the brand new touch bar iteration, just be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Alright, so let's get straight into today's unboxing and quick review video. Now on the front we just have a picture of the MacBook itself, of course, and both the bottom as well as the top say MacBook Pro, and we have Apple logos on either side of the box. Let's go ahead and flip it over. All right, now that we're focused on this sticker here, let's go over a few things. It confirms that this is in fact a 13 inch MacBook Pro with the Retina LED backlit display with IPS or in-plane switching technology and a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It also has the two gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5 with 64 megabytes of EDRAM and turbo boost up to 3.1 gigahertz. It also has eight gigabytes of 1866 megahertz LPDDR3 SD RAM. RAM. And by the way, that is configurable on some 13 inch models up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I just went with the base configuration for this one. So this is what you'd get as an entry level new MacBook Pro. It also has a 256 gigabyte PCIe based SSD, an Intel Iris graphic chip. Of course, that is integrated Two Thunderbolt 3 ports of course, via USB-C. So we do not have four on the 13 inch model that is exclusive to the 15 inch variant. We still have a headphone jack, stereo speakers, a backlit keyboard with an ambient light sensor, 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. We also have the FaceTime HD camera and it is pre-installed with Mac OS Sierra. All right, so let's get into the unboxing aspect now. All right, so using my knife, we're going to make a small cut along the edge of the box here, and we should be able to take the plastic wrap off now. All right, and taking the plastic fully off of the box, we're just going to proceed by lifting the lid. And of course, just like the unboxing experience on all MacBooks, we have the MacBook Pro 13 inch sitting directly on top. And we can actually use this convenient plastic tab that is attached to the plastic wrap protecting the MacBook Pro to pull it out of the box, just like so. And we're actually going to take the plastic wrap off right now as well. All right, setting that off to the side, here it is, guys. No more light up Apple logo, by the way, so this is exactly like the new MacBook. No light up Apple logo, unfortunately, and there are several differences that are kind of steps backwards in my opinion. We're going to get into all of them, but this is definitely the first thing that you'll notice. Again, no light up Apple logo on this one. And by the way, this is the space gray variant. It is kind of close to silver, but it is definitely different. It's not that exact same space black or jet black color finish that you'd get on either the Apple Watch or the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus accordingly. But let's go ahead and lift the lid, power this guy up, set it off to the side, and return to the rest of the contents of the box. So let's just press the power button there and take the cloth protecting the display off. We'll set this off to the side, and we're going to return to the box. Now on the top, we just have this little envelope here that we can pull out. It's actually kind of a little booklet. It of course says designed by Apple in California toward the bottom. And we can go ahead and open the flap and inside, we are first greeted with a little sheet that says MacBook Pro, and it's actually not a sheet at all. It's more of a little pamphlet, and it goes over some of the aspects of the laptop itself, both hardware and software. As you can see here, it walks you through some of the menus as well as the status icons up at the top. So let's set this off. We also have this MacBook Pro sheet. This isn't really too interesting here. And we have two Apple logos that do not correspond to the color of the MacBook Pro. We just have the traditional white Apple logos here. All right, now we can place this off camera. And at the top, we do have the power brick. There is no more power extension for this guy. Unfortunately, we do not have the longer power adapter for the new MacBook Pro. I would show you guys what we got previously with the past iteration of the Retina MacBook Pros, but unfortunately mine is actually connected right now and that's how I'm powering the mic for this video. So I'll put a quick picture up on your screens now. That's what we had previously. This is more like the new MacBook in the sense that we just have this power brick here 
taking the plastic off really quick. And this USB-C cable here. There's also no MagSafe, guys. So this is definitely, like I said, a step backwards in a few aspects, in my opinion. This kind of almost doesn't even really seem like a pro machine, and I really, really wanted to love this thing. But right off the bat, there are several complaints that I have. Of course, no light up Apple logo, which is really more of a novelty than anything else, but it is nice and it is iconic. Speaking of iconic, there's another thing that Apple has actually done away with. We'll get into that shortly, but also the whole charging situation in general, guys. First of all, we don't have any way to really extend this beyond what we have except buying a longer USB type C cable. And we also have no MagSafe, meaning if this thing is plugged into the new MacBook Pro and you were to accidentally trip on it, that's going to yank the entire laptop off of the table or whatever it's sitting on. So just like with the new MacBook, this is is exactly how you'll charge it. You're just going to take the power brick and you're going to take the USB type C cable, plug it in, and you're going to plug the other end into the MacBook Pro, any of its ports, whether you have the 13 inch with two ports or the 15 inch with four ports. That's kind of nice, but it definitely doesn't make up for the lack of a MagSafe, in my opinion. And then this piece right here, you can swap out with an adapter for a different country's wall outlet, and you may actually be able to extend it as well, but Apple doesn't include an extension cord with this cable by default. All right, so now that we're just left with the base of this box, we can go ahead and set it off to the side, and we're going to bring back the star of this video being of course the new MacBook Pro. I'm just getting everything that was in the box off to the other side of the camera here. And we're going to lift the lid to reveal the new design. And we're immediately greeted by the way with the Mac OS setup screen. But right off the bat, you will notice that there are several differences. And in fact, the keyboard is fully different. This isn't the exact same keyboard that's on the new MacBook. However, it has that same type of technology. It has those butterfly key mechanisms that again are beneath all of the keys. And that way it actually is able to be thinner. So it's able to fit in this thinner overall form factor and it's supposed to feel better. I mean, this is the generation two so it has a little bit more give than what you'd find on the new MacBook's keyboard. And I actually kind of like the new MacBook's keyboard. I'm going to admit, I know a lot of people had issues and complications with it, especially typing for longer periods, but that just wasn't me. I loved it from the beginning, so I'm sure this is a great improvement since this features the second generation butterfly key mechanisms. And we also, of course, have the two times larger trackpad now. This thing is absolutely massive, and I have always loved the trackpad with the tap engine beneath it, meaning that it no longer actually physically clicks in. It's not a diving board. It just features the exact same Taptic engine that's now in the Apple Watch, some of the older MacBook Pros, the new MacBook, and of course the iPhones since the 6S and 6S Plus. So basically most of Apple's newer products. Now I'm actually just going to go through this quick on-screen setup right here, and I'm going to be back once I'm finished, and we're going to get into the full overview of this laptop. Okay, so we're booted up here, and we're at the lock screen because there's something I wanted to show you guys remember when I said there was the removal of something else iconic beyond just the glowing Apple logo or the Apple logo featuring the backlight yeah that's the startup Mac sound so when I go ahead and lift the lid here this MacBook Pro will actually turn on after a second or two but you'll notice it no longer has the Mac startup sound that's very unfortunate I'm really sad that Apple decided to kill that off and while some may find that an automatic reboot is more convenient for them I personally don't think so because if if I want to just open up my laptop and clean the screen without turning it on, I don't want it to automatically boot up because the entire reason that you'd want to clean a laptop without the display being on is so that you can see all the smudges and everything that you need to get off of the display. So overall, I'm just really not a fan of the new MacBook Pro for several reasons, all of the ones I've gone over thus far in today's video. However, the design definitely speaks to me. I am in favor of the new design shift, even though it is smaller and and some would much prefer things like an increased battery, more beefy specifications, and just additional ports. Over the thinness and the improved profile of the MacBook Pro, I still like it. It looks nice and it's definitely going to perform better than any other MacBook Pro to date because of course its specifications are better. Speaking of which, let's go 
ahead and click on the Apple logo followed by about this Mac. And now going over the overview screen, it confirms what I said previously that this is in fact pre-installed with Mac OS Sierra and that it is also the late 2016 13-inch MacBook Pro featuring the 2 gigahertz Intel Core i5 CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and the Intel Iris graphics, which by the way has about 1.5 gigs of dedicated graphics memory, which actually isn't bad for an integrated chip. That's pretty good, especially considering this thing is the absolute base model. So let's see how it performs before highlighting the design changes one more time and wrapping this video up. So I've taken the liberty of pre-installing a couple of benchmark tools. First, we're going to start off with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which just tests how fast the system is able to read and write to the drive. In this case, we're talking about an SSD, which is in fact user replaceable. So as you can see right off the bat, this thing flies, even though it's only a 256 gigabyte. Of course, when you start to go up to the higher configurations, it will actually get faster than what we have here. But this is pretty fantastic, guys. We have 1200 megabytes per second write speed, and we have a read speed of over 2000 megabytes per second. This thing looks like it's absolutely going to rip again, even at 256 gigabytes. This is beyond impressive. So let's go ahead and switch over to the other tool that we're going to utilize, which is called Nova Bench. Now, for those of you that don't know, Nova Bench is just a basic benchmark tool, and they do a few things, but they really just give you one result. So let's go ahead and click on Start Tests and Continue because we don't have anything else open. You'll notice we already closed out of Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. What this does is it runs through several different tests of its own, and it combines said test to provide a cumulative computing score, and that score is kind of used to benchmark the computer and see how it compares against other computers because again this is kind of a standardized test so let's go ahead and speed through this all right nova bench just finished up with a total score of 721 that's actually pretty good considering this is the smaller form factor and it is the absolute base macbook pro the entry level you could get a lot done with this machine especially more than what you could do on really any of the new MacBook, so to speak, because this is the pro version with an improved processor, faster flash storage, and of course, more dedicated graphics memory. But we're just going to close out of this and we're going to go over the machine in general so I can just show you guys some of the main changes here with this new MacBook. Pro. Right off the bat, you'll notice that when you open the lid beyond just the keyboard and the new trackpad, we actually have the words MacBook Pro written right beneath the display. Now that seems to be making a comeback. Apple kind of did away with that with the Retina MacBook Pro. It seems to be back now, so we do have the MacBook Pro writing beneath the display. It's not too bad. I know some individuals were complaining about it on forums, but honestly, I don't think many will notice it, especially once they're in their workflow. We also have improved speakers that run the span of the width of the keyboard on either side of it. So this is just the left side, and then switching over to the right side now. It is kind of hard to get on camera here, but there we go, you can see the right side. And of course we do have that keyboard with the new and improved Butterfly Gen 2 mechanisms. And then remember the bigger trackpad, we also have a thinner overall design, which is nice. This thing is just as thin as the MacBook Air. I absolutely love how thin it is. And it almost really replaces the MacBook Air because Apple didn't update it. They just killed off the 11 inch MacBook Air. They're still keeping the 13 inch around for now, but this thing has a very similar form factor to the MacBook Air, except it's better because it has less of a footprint, meaning it's actually smaller overall, even though it does have the exact same display size. And when we go ahead and flip it over to the left-hand side, you will notice that we do have two USB-C ports, as I said previously. Now, Apple really wants you to do everything through these ports, including charging. So I do have the cable right here for actually charging it, and you can connect to either of them to actually charge the brand new MacBook Pro. It's a little bit hard to get it to fit there on camera, but as you can see, we can use it interchangeably between the two. And beyond just USB and charging, you can also use these ports for things like HDMI with an adapter. So that's a brand new MacBook Pro in its entirety. If you guys like this really quick unboxing and review, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when I release brand new unboxings. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Advice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.